Monster Hunter Rise has many melee weapons for picking fights with monsters in a battle of will, but some people invest more into dexterity than strength, and as such an elegant weapon is needed to put that ability to use. <laughs> Lol, not the guns, I said we're putting skill to use. Today we're talking about the bow, the ranged weapon that was somehow invented after guns in the Monster Hunter universe, only composed of a durable stick, a durable string, and an army of pointy expendable sticks. The bow is a ranged weapon able to attack monsters from a safer distance sometimes, those times being if you don't use a short range option and also have something to distract the monster from the active number one threat to its life. Using the bow, you can fire off arrows, but just like in Dungeons and Dragons, no one actually counts ammo, so instead of firing off ammunition, you instead shoot solidified stamina, making your stamina meter the equivalent of a rechargeable quiver. But before we talk about actually shooting, we need to talk about charge levels. Each bow comes with a series of shot types that you can cycle through by increasing your charge level, the last level being the best and highest. The bow is super versatile in that you can charge up your level in all the common video game ways you'd expect, either by holding your shot to charge it up, or by firing several shots like a combo. However, doing these will reset the charge level at the end of the combo, so in order to maintain your charge at the highest level, you're going to need to learn how to dance. By pressing B after a shot, you'll dodge in a direction of your choice, preventing your charge level from dropping at the cost of stamina. Naturally, you'll want to follow up with another shot to keep the chain going, but you'll need to readjust your aim each time you move. Also, you'll want to stay relatively close to the target, as even though you have range, there is a critical range in which your shots deal actual damage instead of actual pittance. Using the bow, there are three different types of shots a bow can use at each level. Rapid, Pierce, and Spread. Rapid is what you typically expect from a bow and arrow kit, lobbing off a single shot that will either hit or miss its target, except except instead of shooting a single arrow, you shoot a bundle of them. Great for monsters you don't want to be anywhere near. Pierce does only shoot one arrow, but this one is hacked for no clip and will travel through the monsters, dealing damage several times along the way. Good for monsters that are long enough to wiggle. Finally, there's Spread, which shoots off a fan of arrows, and while this makes it easier to land at least a few hits, it has a shorter range like a shotgun. For each bow you use, consistent shot type is a good trait, but lacking that, pay close attention to the highest charge level's type, as ideally it'll be the one you use the most. Bows also excel at taking advantage of elemental weaknesses, and among the five elements and three shot types, you have plenty of options to give yourself materials to hunt. Anyway, for the actual controls and abilities of the bow, pressing the right trigger will fire off an arrow, but if you actually want to hit your target, you'll want to hold the left trigger to aim. Pressing B in a direction while aiming will initiate a special dodge. If you find yourself in melee range and find yourself lacking in the good judgment or stamina to just keep shooting and dodging away, you can also press A to melee attack, or X following up the special dodge. If you have a moment to stand still, you can also press A after a shot to unload a power shot, firing up to two in succession. And if you have even more time to kill, usually when the monster is taking a mandatory power nap, you can press X and A at the same time to fire a dragon pierce shot, piercing the target and any explosive presence you may have left them to find upon waking. You can also fire off an arc shot by pressing A while holding the right trigger, aimable by holding A. This easily forgettable ability creates a small buff zone of a type dictated by your bow. The zone will either increase affinity, increase defense, or apply regeneration to those who enter it. Now, research has shown that sharp and pointy objects are massively effective in slaying large beasts on their own, but arrows can be enhanced by coating them with materials for bonus effect. There are seven types of coatings that can be applied to arrows, but not every bow can use every coating because even though the bows are versatile, their associated quivers apparently have dumb standards in order to be unique or something. Sometimes these standards are beneficial though, as coatings marked with a plus get coating boost, increasing their effectiveness for that specific bow. Close range coatings come with every bow an infinite amount and remove any penalties from being too close to your target. They also make your melee attack better, but I really hope you didn't pick bow for its melee potential. Power coatings increase arrow damage, being the most popular since you can hold more than twice as many at one time than the other coatings. Then there's status coatings that can inflict a status after landing successive shots. Poison coatings and blast coatings change the monster's status to in pain, while sleep and paralysis change it to not moving. Exhaust coatings can exhaust the monster, but just like most things that hit you in the face will build up KO damage when shot into the monsters. Lastly in the moveset are the switch skills and silk binds. First, when dodging between shots, you can either do a charging sidestep or dodge bolt. Charging sidestep moves a large distance and increases the current charge level by one stage regardless of shooting. Dodge bolt, on the other hand, executes a melee attack during the dodge. Additionally, successfully iframing an attack that would otherwise ruin your combo raises your charge level by two, and as a special bonus can also be comboed into a special dragon piercer that charges in half the time. Next up is the power shot and absolute power shot. Absolute power shot adds stun potential to shots at the cost of more stamina, a trade-off that makes it absolutely better than the normal power shot. The final switch skill choice is melee attack versus stake thrust. Melee attacks aren't frequent when you're busy shooting arrows unless you're using dodge bolts, but a melee attack executed after a sidestep or dodge bolt will perform a lunging attack. Melee attacks can also apply coating effects without consuming the coating, but between zenny and damage, coatings are cheaper. The alternative, stake thrust, gives up coating effects to instead stab the monster with a stake like it's a vampire's heart. Unfortunately, this is not more effective on Malzano, but landing more arrows on the stab spot will deal extra cool damage as you pretend to be Robin Hood splitting your own arrow down the middle. Also, you can still get those free coating effects with dodge bolt, so melee attack might want to get familiar with the bench, you'll inevitably leave it on. For silk binds, pressing R and X will activate focus shot, aerial aim, or butcher's bind. Focus shot is a showy of A doing a cool backflip and superhero landing, leaving you feeling so cool you'll rapidly recover stamina. Otherwise, aerial aim launches you high into the air where you can unload up to three shots so strong they'll delay your fall, culminating in an optional landing attack. While this is great for jumping over things, you can't move any non-vertical direction while airborne, so you best hope it's safe to land. Finally, there's butcher's bind, where you let a wire bug pick its favorite arrow to interrupt 
interrupt your combos to shoot a single arrow into the monster that deals extra damage if your next shot hits it, so you best hope you don't miss either one of those shots or aren't trying to cut a tail with pointy sticks. For the RNA silk binds, the first is Herculean Draw, which at the cost of two wire bugs and the need to remember to activate it, simply increases damage. The other silk bind Bolt Boost was crafted when people kept complaining about critical rate being so good and wanted critical rate too. So with Bolt Boost active, you can enable super critical range, where you can chance being at the perfect distance to the monster for even more damage. Finally, let's talk about bow skills. The single most important skill is Bow Charge Plus, which grants bows access to the fourth charge level of your bow. In Sunbreak, you can make a deco for this, but you'll otherwise need a very specific headpiece called the Mighty Bow Feather. And yes, that is just an earring, and it provides about as much protection as you'd expect it to, and it takes your entire headgear slot. In addition to strict fashion, bowmains also tend to have a rather strict diet, preferring Dongo Marksman and Dongo Fighter skills for further increased damage and stamina. Then, while being dexterous is good for archery, all the dancing around is quite taxing, so you can compensate by having lots of constitution and stamina surge to dance for longer periods between breaks. Also, depending on the shot type of your bow, you'll want normal rapid, pierce, or spread up to increase the damage of your shots. If you're like me and get these from decos instead of armor, you can also swap them for good luck decos, and as long as you look like you know what you're doing on the hunt, no one will check and judge your poor DPS decisions. Optionally, a couple levels of reload speed will also increase the speed of applying or removing coatings. Special ammo boost increases the power of exclusively the dragon piercer if you have some spare slots, and a bait extender can actually make your dash chancing feel distanced relative to the size of the monster rather than that longsword you've been avoiding eye contact with. Finally, being stabbed by several hundred pointy sticks tends to cause monsters to leave the area, and if they head downhill, you can get a little extra crit rate while following them using affinity sliding. In summary, the bow is a good ranged weapon, capable of some great damage as long as you know how to aim. The selection of bows offer a variety of shot types to tackle monsters of all shapes, sizes, and scarinesses, as well as some utilitous coatings to help out. Just remember, bows have an arc shot, like seriously, I keep forgetting about this thing.